Hey guys, Phil here. Today we're going to take a look at HA Dockermon, which is a Node.js service I've created to make it easy to work with Docker containers and Home Assistant. Okay, so here I am logged into my Synology NAS, and I'm just viewing the Docker console here in the UI. So as you can see, I have a few Docker containers running. One of those is Home Assistant, and the other three are Grafana, MQTT, and MySQL. So at the moment, the Home Assistant container can't see any other container inside the Home Assistant itself. So what we want to be able to do is add a switch or a uh, sensor into Home Assistant that can detect when these containers are up or down. Once we add that visibility into Home Assistant, we can then use Home Assistant notifications and automations to send out alerts like when one of the containers goes down, for example, if MySQL goes down, Home Assistant can try and restart it, or it can even send an alert to say, hey, MySQL has gone down, you need to take a look at it. In order to do that, I've created a small Node.js service which will run and connect to the Docker service running on the Synology NAS. It can also work on any other machine that is using Docker. So let's go over to our command line. You can check out the Docker Hub or my blog post for the commands I'm about to run if you just want to copy and paste them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is use the command line to issue a docker run command. We're going to give the container a name so we can easily identify it. And we also want to give it the restart always flag, just so if anything goes wrong with this container, it automatically comes back up. And the next thing we're going to want to do is define the port mapping for this container. So by default, HA Docamon will use port 8126, which you can change if you need to using the dash P flag. I'm not going to change it, but I am going to open it up. So let's do that. If you do want to change which port it is listening on, you want to change that first one there. Next up, we're going to go ahead and mount the volume for the Docker connection. Now, this is the important part. By mounting the Docker connection socket, we give the container access to the host's Docker. So we're going to do that with a dash V flag. Now, each system might be a little bit different, but the default place where the Docker connection socket is, is in var run docker.soc, and we want to mount that to the same place in the container itself. There is another volume you can mount, which is a configuration directory. It's optional. It's only useful if you want to change um, any advanced settings. There is a setting to enable um, HTTP authentication if you want to use name and password. I'm not going to use that today, so I'm going to skip that volume. The next thing we want to do is run in detached mode with a D flag. And finally, we're just going to tell Docker which image to use, which is on a Docker Hub. And now we'll press enter and it will go ahead and install that for us. Okay, so that is now installed. And if we do a Docker PS, we can see that is now up. So now how do we use this API? So because it's a RESTful API, we're going to just create a HTTP RESTful switch in Home Assistant. You can copy and paste the YAML code that's on the blog post. Um, the important part is that the URL for the service. So you're going to call it on 8126 or the port that you defined in that Docker run command. You're then going to forward slash container and then forward slash the name of the container itself that you've named it. So for example, we can see here that my home assistant has a name of home and dash assistant. Annoyingly, it's on the other line. So in this case, if I wanted to see the state of the Home Assistant container, I could do a URL to the container forward slash home dash assistant. And you can see that's exactly what I've done here. And it's just returned JSON with a state of running and how long it's been running for. 
the is on template will automatically check for that running state and we'll have the and we'll mark the switch as on in home assistant so i'm going to go ahead and add these to my configuration and let's see how they look so here we can see in home assistant we now have this card that i've added in, into a group i've also used customize to add some icons as well so if i was to go ahead and flick one of these switches off for example we'll flick off mqtt this will actually stop the docker container by issuing a docker stop command on the host so let's go ahead and do that and straight away the light turns off and if we go back to our terminal and we can see here it was running before let's do a docker ps now and now the mosquito has stopped so let's go ahead and flick that back on and we'll just do another docker ps to check that and there it is coming back up now so another problem i've had with using docker for home assistant is the server management icons here restart and stop for whatever reason it could be my synology or docker in general those buttons actually won't work for me if i attempt to press restart home assistant will stop but i won't be able to get back into home assistant for whatever reason the container doesn't die correctly and then home assistant is in limbo so the only way for me to restart home assistant whenever i make a configuration change is to actually go into the shell or use the docker dsm to restart the docker container However, I think it would be easier if I had a button inside Home Assistant, like these buttons are, that we could use. To facilitate that, I have a section in the blog post which goes through all the shell commands and how you can restart your own Home Assistant container and adding a state card to the Home Assistant front end that when you click that activate button there, it will restart Home Assistant for you. If you've got any questions or maybe you want to let me know what you're using HA Dogmon for, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. Cheers.